everyone. I welcome you to the CC lecture series. I am Nupur Chavla, teaching English literature at Maitri College, Delhi University. And today's lecture is part of this new series which discusses British drama in the 20th century. So today's lecture is titled British Drama and Overview. So when we look at uh, uh, you know this lecture today, we are going to essentially discuss uh, what exactly was the, uh, you know, what were the characteristics of drama that flourished in um, England in the, 20th in the 20th century, what were its different forms, uh, what were the, uh, you know, different conditions which impacted uh, this uh, uh, form of writing. So all of this uh, will be in discussion today and you will get an idea of uh, this uh, form of writing in the 20th century. Uh, now you see, I would like to begin by first stating that uh, in English history or in British history, every era is associated with a distinct literary trend, right? Uh, so any period in history that we pick up, uh, we notice that a particular kind of writing flourished at that time. There were certain kind of themes uh, that were prevalent. Now this is of course true for, uh, you know, uh, most literatures, but today of course we are uh, discussing the British uh, drama, right? So, um, if we just broadly look at this uh, aspect that how different uh, periods in history are associated with different styles of writing, uh, we say that if we look at the 18th century, the 18th century is very often associated with or is referred to as the age of the satire. Now, satire was a particular, uh, you know, uh, style of writing, satire could be in poetry, satire could also be in prose. but. Uh, but the uh, aim of a satirical writing was to, um, you know, point out the follies of uh, maybe say a social system or an individual, etc. And uh, it, there would be a sense of laughter associated with it, right? So satire is automatically associated with laughter. But so then it would be witty, right? But then at the same time, uh, uh, you know, the the intention of a satire is to correct the wrongs, right? So as a satire would point out uh, towards the gaps, uh, the the intention of uh, that uh, that kind of a laughter which uh, laughs at the follies, which laughs at the gaps, the intention is to, uh, you know, to, uh, to make an effort to correct what is wrong. So 18th century then in that sense is the age of satire. The 19th century is, uh, you know, uh, most often referred to as the age of the novel because this is the time when the novel form uh, came into being and also flourished, right? Uh, and then when we come to the 20th century, now in the 20th century, uh, drama had already come into being, drama uh, as a form was already in practice, but we see that in the 20th century, drama makes a comeback right? A comeback. Why? Because around the 19th century when novel takes, uh, uh, you know, uh, the foreground, at that time, drama, no, not a lot of plays were being written, right? Uh, there was a, a focus on novel. Uh, people were writing novels because that is what was being read. Now, of course, there are uh, reasons behind it and I'm not going to go into those um, today. But uh, what we say is that in the 20th century, then there's a comeback of the dramatic form. Right? And it's also redefined to a certain extent. So this is a thought we, uh, that we need to keep in mind that in 20th century, this dramatic, uh, uh, dramatic form makes a comeback and it's uh, redefined to a certain extent. After a little, uh, so to say, uh, you know, break in the 19th century, uh, we see this form coming back in vogue in the 20th century. Now, the next thing that we say is that uh, in the 20th century, drama actually, uh, a, a particularly in England, showed a trend, right? So broadly uh, speaking, there were two kinds of plays being staged. First were uh, the musical uh, comedies or which a lot of people also, uh, uh, you know, refer to as the frocks and frills uh, plays. Where frocks and frills uh, means nothing but it's just a phrase which, uh, you know, uh, talks about something which is, uh, uh, you know, kind of um, light-hearted, uh, not very serious, etc. Right. So those were one kinds of plays that were being written in the 20th century, and then the other kind was the serious drama. Right. Now, uh, when we say serious drama, it means that um, a play which had something to say. 
a play which uh, which had uh, you know uh, political relevance so that was serious drama so broadly stating these two were uh, you know the kind of plays uh, uh, that were uh, being written but of course there are further subdivisions as well which we are going to talk about in today's lecture right and now this uh, you know um, uh, division into the two kinds of uh, uh, plays was actually in line with the european trend so elsewhere in europe also we saw uh this kind of a, a division between the serious drama and uh, as we just now called the the the, the somewhat light hearted uh, plays which were being written in the 20th century right so now um this uh, thing is further uh, reiterated this fact is further reiterated by stephen greenblatt uh there's a chapter uh, titled 20th century drama in the book norton anthology of english literature uh and uh, the people associated with this are stephen greenblatt and um mh abrams but in this particular chapter stephen greenblatt uh, uh makes a comment about this trend that we just now talked about of, of 20th century drama and let's look at what he says he says and i quote in britain the impact of these continental innovations was delayed by a conservative theater establishment until the 1950s and 1960s when they converged with the counter cultural revolution to transform the nature of english language theater unquote now here what is uh, greenblatt saying now uh, two things are happening here first he is indicating that how uh, drama in britain was somehow uh, you know uh, impacted by developments in drama elsewhere in europe so it was not uh, isolated in that sense uh, what we notice the trends in british drama were not isolated they were very much connected they were very much influenced by uh, uh, trends in uh, uh, or or let's say dramatic trends in other parts of the europe right but here uh, uh, greenblatt says that the that there were certain innovations that were uh, you know uh, happening in uh, uh, in europe in the dramatic form but these innovations he says were uh, uh, delayed by a conservative theater establishment until the 1950s and 60s so what does this show this very clearly establishes that on the one hand in british there was this conservative late uh, theater establishment conservative would mean something which is not political something which is mainstream etc so for a large part uh, in the 20th century there was this kind of theater which was there uh, which greenblatt would call a uh, conservative theater and um, so which would mean just a light hearted theater which was not without a purpose etc so this kind of a theater greenblatt says kind of a uh, delayed uh the establishment of uh this counter cultural um uh, revolution uh in uh, a theater right and this according to greenblatt comes only around the 50s and the 60s so it's only then uh that you know this kind of a uh, uh, experimental political theater the uh, uh, theater of ideas that comes into being okay so uh what do we see in this quote then greenblatt also asserts that there was these two kinds of theaters uh, uh, or or these two kinds of plays that were being written in britain and there was some kind of a connection uh, uh, between uh, these two trends with other developments in the dramatic form in europe right so uh, now we will still further uh, move on and talk about i would say the categories of plays that one uh, finds in the 20th century okay so so far what have we looked uh, what have we seen we've seen that uh, uh, you know every era in uh, english history is associated with a particular kind of a literary trend and in 20th century we see that uh, the drama uh, so this is that age when drama makes a comeback or is redefined to a certain extent the next thing that we said was that uh, broadly stating there uh, you know the the kind of plays being written in 20th century were of two kinds one was uh, uh, you know light hearted plays that were for entertainment and did not really have a political uh, dimension but then there were the other uh, uh, plays as well uh, which came up around the 50s and the 60s that were incredibly political uh, and they were also uh, you know uh, uh, experimental in form from here we come to the third point uh, where we look at 
the kinds of plays that we see in 20th century. First, we have just now mentioned were the musical comedies or let us call them the light hearted plays uh, that were written in the 20th century. Then the second uh, category one can say were the political plays or uh, a lot of times as they are referred to as the theatre of ideas. Right? Now, when we say theatre of ideas, what does it mean? It very clearly establishes that a play which makes a point, a play which is meant to, um, you know, uh, which is meant to make you rethink certain things which are going on in society, which is meant to make you question, which is uh, uh, meant to, uh, you know, give you a perspective on things. Uh, it, is, it is not only for the sake of uh, entertainment, but it does have a purpose, right? That is what we uh, mean by the theatre of ideas or as we see over here, the political plays. And then of course, the third kind was the theatre of the absurd, right? Uh, and a lot of times you will uh, see this being referred to as the modernist plays as well, right? So we can call them theatre of the absurd or the modernist plays. Now, what is the theatre of the absurd? The word absurd itself means what? Something which is uncanny, something which is unusual. So, these were those plays uh, which uh, had uh, experimental form. They experimented with form and even with content, right? So, all the conventions that had been followed so far were then, uh, you know, questioned in the way these plays were composed, right? Uh, and of course, then we also see... Um, a fourth category which we'll talk about towards the end uh, of today's lecture which is that there were also certain Irish plays that were being written and a lot of times when we talk about drama in England or in Britain we do to an extent also touch upon um, uh, the, uh, the Irish uh, theatre scene as well, right? So we'll come to that uh, but broadly speaking we need to keep these categories in mind and we will elaborate upon these categories as we uh, move ahead, okay? Now, um, Greenblatt uh, says uh, that the West End, which was the England's Broadway. Now, what is Broadway? Broadway, if you know, is uh, is uh, uh, you know uh, in America. Uh, there, are, so it's a it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a theater. Um, uh, 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 you can you can you can call it a space. You can also call it uh, you know certain theaters. So uh, in America, right in New York City, particularly. So, Broadway is uh, very, very popular for staging some of the most seminal plays um, in America. So, the West End, which uh, Greenblatt refers to as England's Broadway, he says in the 20th century, it produced musical comedies and well-made plays, right? So, this was the first kind of plays that were being um, um, uh, written in the uh, 20th century and as we have just now also taken a look. Uh, and apart from that... Um, the smaller theatres uh, and the Irish venues, they followed another trend. So, a trend which was not, um, uh, you know, about these uh, just light-hearted plays, but they were uh, uh, those uh, plays which were political. And where were they staged? In smaller theatres uh, and also in the Irish venues, right? Now, so these are uh, some of the broad categories which we need to keep in mind about the kinds of plays that were written in the 20th century. Now, from there, let us uh, talk about some common themes in the 20th century, in the early 20th century drama, right? Now, the first theme, most obviously, as we have been reiterating, uh, is political, right? Now, political, uh, how? Because uh, we see that these plays were reflecting the unease of the workers with the state. Uh, these plays were taking up questions of uh, you know discontent, they were uh, they were engaging with uh, gaps in society. They were looking at social trends critically. So uh, all these uh, uh, themes, then uh, we can say, are the uh, uh, political aspects of the 20th century drama, right? So one kind of themes were political. The second kind of themes that one can, uh, you know, uh, identify in the 20th century drama is are the philosophical themes. Now, philosophical, uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, those themes or those ideas which, uh, or, or those plays which would uh, delve into the questions of human life and existence, right? What is the purpose of human life? Why are we here? Um, 
uh, what is uh, what is it that we are uh, you know moving towards every day what is the reason for our existence all these uh, uh, you know uh, themes or, or all these questions uh, then were dealt with uh, by these plays and so therefore we say that uh, the another set of themes uh, in the 20th century drama then were philosophical and as we go ahead you will see that um, the particular theater uh, which is associated with philosophical uh, themes um, most obviously was a theater of the absurd while theater of the absurd was also to a large extent political but at the same time we also see philosophical themes unfold there right and then the third uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, quite close to the first one is the revolutionary themes right so for instance uh, uh, you know you would see certain plays uh, explore the theme of colonization now as we all know that uh, around that time uh, british uh, had colonies abroad okay so people in england were aware that uh, that that certain countries were being colonized by england um, uh, you know uh, and right uh, uh, rightly or wrongly people had an opinion on that so that also became one of the points of engagement of drama uh, in this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, decade so this is something which we need to uh, keep in mind as uh, as far as the themes of the 20th century drama are concerned so they were political they were philosophical and sometimes they even dealt with the question of colonization all right now having looked at uh, some broad themes or or some broad concerns of uh, the plays during this time uh, let's look at uh, two very important events which uh, happened um, in history at this time and that also then impacted uh, you know uh, the writing of the plays what were these two events first was industrialization and second were the world wars now of course industrialization is uh, happens uh, not merely in 20th century but it uh, you know makes inroads in the 19th century itself okay but definitely it one can say that the impact or the full blown uh, version of mechanization and and industrialization is uh, felt in the 20th century okay and and the and, and the second event is what the world wars so these two are very important uh, uh, occurrences in history which uh, which seem to have widely impacted the kind of writing that we have at this time right now what was the impact first let's look at industrialization right now the impact of industrialization actually resulted in plays or in drama lamenting the alienation of humans in an increasingly mechanical world now of course when we talk about industrialization we see that uh, it means that uh, everything was be- uh, was was becoming mechanized now um, it's not uh, exactly uh, human uh, uh, labor uh, manual labor uh, that the work was being done now instead there were machines uh, that were being used for uh, various purposes right so that's what we mean by uh, uh, mechanization right so once this uh, uh, happened um people were or, or or human beings were were at some kind of a loss right they uh, no uh, what i j- uh, just a while ago i mentioned the word alienation right now, alienation means feeling disconnected okay uh, now what is the link between uh, you you might wonder that what is the link between alienation and uh, mechanization the two things uh, first of course we all know that if we make something with our hand we are a lot more uh you know directly involved in the process we uh, there there also could be a sense of attachment with the the by product okay uh, and we also know that uh, when it's um, uh, you know human labor or when it's manual labor which is involved in making something then it's also at a smaller scale right it's at a smaller scale um it uh, it has a more sense of personal involvement uh, in that sense but when the machines came right when when machines started to do the work uh human beings were alienated from the whole process why because uh you know the the finished product then would have multiple people working on it so the finished product would no longer be the work of say a single individual or even a small group of individuals the finished product is always a group of multiple people who have been working on it so with that what happens the person feels alienated from the product of one's labor right 
uh, whatever that you are working on every day, you don't see the end result. You don't know where it's ultimately going. Why? Because you are just part of the process. You are one cog in the wheel, as they say. So that. Uh, you know, led to alienation uh, in uh, human beings, and uh, and 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 this thought and this experience uh, became uh, quite pro uh, prominent because of industrialization, uh, uh, or as uh, as we just now said, because of this increasingly mechanical world, and so therefore, you know, this experience or this uh, felt um, uh, thought uh, was uh, uh, also saw its way uh, as a theme in the uh, drama of this age, right? Uh, now, apart from that, even the wars, I said that the world wars, not just this mechanization, but even world wars also uh, somewhat, uh, uh, you know, uh, contributed to this feeling of alienation. Why? Because there was widespread destruction all around. Uh, destruction to an extent that it seems to be, it, uh, that it seemed to be completely irrational. Nobody knew, you know, I mean, just, just think of it. Uh, wars are definitely, I mean, they have a political dimension to it. But but think of it from a common person's point of view. Why are one set of people wanting to kill another? Sometimes they don't even know. But they just know that left, right and center, they see uh, places and people being bombarded, right? They see destruction, they see violence, they see bloodshed. So during all of this chaos, uh, where they are not even aware of why all of this is happening, and they also don't even see a way forward. What happens? The sense of um, uh, you know uh, um, uh, gloom, the sense of alienation, the sense of uh, chaos and confusion uh, starts to predominate people's minds. Right. So that's how we see that you know uh, these two events uh, actually are quite seminally, um, therefore influenced the writing of the 20th century drama. Okay. Uh, so we'll very quickly uh, uh, look at all the points that we made in this lecture. Uh, the first thing that we said was that, uh, you know, in the 20th century, it's a time when the dramatic form makes a comeback. It did exist earlier, but it had somewhat been overshadowed by the novel form in the, in the 19th century. And in 20th century, it somewhat sees a kind of a revival, if we can call it that. The next thing that we said was that, uh, you know, there are uh, two uh, broad trends that one can notice in the forms of drama. Uh, one were the plays which were written for entertainment, which were light-hearted uh, 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 plays, etc. Uh, and then the other were those with a purpose, uh, which we call the drama of ideas or which we call the political plays, right? Uh, from there, we uh, uh, looked at that how Stephen Greenblatt also comments that there was a, a connection between uh, the dramatic scene in Britain uh, and the developments happening elsewhere in Europe, right? The developments in drama uh, elsewhere in Europe had some kind of a connection with what was happening in uh, Britain as well, right? Uh, thereafter, we talked about some um, broad themes that can be seen in plays of the 20th century and we uh, looked at that how the themes were philosophical, they were political, and at times they even, uh, you know, uh, explored the question of or the theme of colonization. And um, finally, we uh, uh, looked at the two important events that happened in history at this point of time, which uh, impacted the um, kind of writing that was being done. And these two events were industrialization and the world wars, right? So a particular kind of an experience uh, was a result of these two events and this experience, uh, you know, saw or made its way into the writing of the time. And when you read the plays of uh, 20th century, you will be able to mark these themes. All right. Now, in the next lecture, we will go further in detail and talk about the dramatic forms in the 20th century. Thank you.